Hello everyone, welcome. We will now be going through the companion notebook that we have prepared for week 1 in which we will look at standard PCA using a numerical. Firstly, we will list down the steps that we do to perform PCA. So the first step is to center the data set and then calculate the covariance matrix of this centered data. Then compute the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this covariance matrix. Now that we have this, depending on the dimension in which we want to project our data, we will sort our eigenvalues in descending order and select the top uh, k eigenvectors corresponding to those eigenvalues. Once we have selected our eigenvectors, we project the centered data set on those uh, eigenvectors and get our representation. So first, let us observe this data set. The data set is of shape d, n, where d is the number of features and n is the number of data points. So if we consider this, we have eight points with each point having two features. The first point is 4, 1, the next one 5, 4 and so on. If we look at it on a graph, we can see that uh, the data points are not centered. To center this data set, first we'll calculate the mean. And once we have the mean, we need to subtract it from each point and we will write it as a new data set x centered. So consider a point 4, 2. The value we get after updating it will be 1.25, 0.75. We will do this for all the points and we will write them in a matrix called x centered. And now if you look at the graph, you can see that it is centered. A side-by-side -side comparison of the two shows the operation that we have performed. We know that when we find our principal component, it should be the direction which explains the maximum, so or the one with the maximum variance, which we expect it to be along this direction. So let us see if what we have, let us see if the operations we perform confirm the same. To calculate the covariance matrix, we have this. So here x is of shape uh, 2 cross 8 and x transpose is of shape 8 cross 2. So when we multiply the two of them, we should get a matrix of shape 2 cross 2. So now that we have our covariance matrix, we can calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors corresponding to it. The computation of eigenvalues and eigenvectors is something that is covered in the machine learning foundation course. So now we will use a function called solver, which will take in the covariance matrix C and give us the lambda and W values, which are nothing but the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So the highest eigenvalue ends up being 17.5 and the corresponding eigenvector is as shown. So now this eigenvector is in this direction and we can see this confirms with what we expected it to be. Likewise, uh, now that we have our first eigenvector, the second eigenvector or the second principal component has to be perpendicular to it because that I, that principal component is the one that captures the error that we get or while projecting this on the first principal component. Now, uh, when our data set is in a very high dimensional space and we want to use principal components to bring it to a lower dimensional space, the question is how do we decide how many principal components to consider? So for that we use this in which we use this formula lambda i where i sums up from 1 to k and lambda i where i sums from 1 to d in the denominator. This is the dimension of our points originally and this is the dimension of the points when we want to project it. So if we consider k equal to 1, we will just have lambda 1 divided by lambda 1 plus lambda 2 and on substitution we get 0.979. So this value indicates that by just projecting our points on the first principal component, we can explain over 97% of the variance in the data set. Next, we will represent our data using the two principal component and find the reconstruction error. So our original data set that we have X centered and the two principal components are shown. And to get the representation of it, we simply need to multiply the two. And now that we have this, this is nothing but the scalar projection of the points on the first principal component. Likewise, this is the scalar projection of the points on the second principal component. To get the vector projection, we need to multiply that value with the first principal component. And this projection is nothing but our reconstructed uh, matrix. Now this is the matrix of reconstructed points and we look at it on a graph 
this is how it looks like. As you can see, this is when we project it on the line, uh, this green point is where it would lie. Likewise, we calculate the projection on second principal component as well. Now, since the points are in two dimension, when we sum up the representation that we get from the two principal components, uh, we should get back our original data set, which is what is happening. Next, we calculate the error when we project the points on the first principal component. So the first for the first point is 1.25,0.75 in our x-centered. And when we reconstruct it, we get it as 1, 1. So to calculate the error, uh, we use this formula where error is x1, the original point, minus x1 transpose w1 into w1, which is the reconstructed point, and then we square it. So that time we get the value to be 0 0.125. Likewise, when we do it for all the points, we get this error vector. And on taking the mean, the value turns out to be 0 0.375. We will now take another vector wr01. So this vector, as you notice, will be along the y-axis and we will try to project x-centered on it and calculate the errors. So clearly, the least error is when the points are projected on the first principal component. So the error we get will obviously be uh, more than uh, what we have found in this case. So on projecting the points on WR, we get this matrix and then the error vector turns out to be this value. The process is same as we have done before and the mean squared error will be 8.9375. As you can see, the value is much more than what we had in the case of the first principal component. Finally, uh, we have a question in which we are given the first principal component and which of the following options can be the second principal component. So we know that principal components have to be orthogonal to each other. So uh, an easy way to do is to multiply the two of them and see which of them ends up giving the value zero. On doing this operation, we will see that if we multiply the given vector w1 and multiply with this option c, we, en we end up getting the value zero, which indicates that this can be the second principal component. Now that we have seen the numerical in the slides, we will just test it out again using Python and see the results. First, uh, we will import the required packages. So for this, we use the package numpy and we use matplotlib to plot the graphs. Now we have our data set and we need to assign it to a variable. So we will do that and assign it to variable x. And when we plot it on a graph, this is what we will get. So again, you can see that the points are not centered and we need to center it. So to center the data set, we have a function called center, which will take the data points x, calculate the mean and subtract. And we have our x centered data set as seen. Now we can see that our data set is centered. While plotting the two of them side by side, we can see the difference. Now we compute the covariance matrix. The covariance matrix is a product of x and x transpose divided by n. So on performing that, we get a 2 by 2 matrix, which is as shown. The next step for us is to find the principal components. Here we are going to find the first two principal components. To do this, we are going to make use of this function to directly give us the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. On printing the two eigenvectors, we see we get these values. Next, we are going to reconstruct the data set using these two principal components. Since our points are, in, are two dimensional, when we reconstruct the points using two principal components and we sum them up, we should get back our original data set. So when I do that, you see that we get back our original data set. First, let us find the reconstruction error for a single point on the first principal component. So to do that, here we have our single point and then we have the point that we have got after uh, subjecting it to the first principal component and the reconstruction error ends up being 0 0.125. Now if we do it for the entire data set, this is the error vector that we will get. And on calculating the mean value of it, the error ends up being 0 0.375. 
Next, we will consider another random vector wr. This is along 0, 1, which is nothing but the y-axis. We will repeat the same steps of calculating the error, and the error vector that we get in this case is shown. Now, when we calculate the reconstruction error, we see that it is 8.9375, which is much higher than 0 0.375 we got when we did it for the first principal component. And now we consider the case of how do I determine the optimal value of k. So to do that, uh, we check the variance that is explained when we consider different values of k. Here you see that for k is equal to 1, we explain over 97% of the variance. So depending on how much variance we want to explain, we can take different values of k. Now that we have seen this on a synthetic data set, we will have a look at it on the MNIST data set. The MNIST dataset is a collection of uh, different numbers and for our purpose, we will consider the images of uh, the digit 2. So we will visualize one such image in the dataset and you see this is how it is present. So like the steps that we have done previously in the slides as, in this, as well as above, we will first center the dataset, then we will find the covariance matrix. After we get the covariance matrix, we will compute two principal components. And now if I were to show it along the first principal component, this is how it can be visualized. Now that we have it, our next task is, given a test image, we want to visualize the proxies by reconstructing it using top k principal components. And it says consider four values of k, and the values of k should explain different amounts of variance. So we will have different values of k depending on how much variance we want to explain. So that part is covered in this piece of code. So when I run this, we will have our test image on the side, which is the original test image. And depending on how much variance I wanted to explain, I have four such images. As you can see, when I want to explain more variance, the images are getting closer to the given test image. So that is it for this notebook. Thank you.